Am I really gonna light a fire with just my bare hands? Of course I am. But I'm not just gonna do it because it's cool, but also because I am copying an electric wizard named Matthias Boza, who came up with this trick over 280 years ago. How did that transform our world? Well, I'll tell you, and along the way, I'll talk about electric parties, shocking kisses, deadly fame, and really, really bad poetry. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. We start with one of the most flamboyant, self-aggrandizing, and generally kooky scientists of all time, Matthias Boza. Boza was born in 1710 in Leipzig, Germany, and was basically a child prodigy, giving lectures in physics, chemistry, and mathematics by the time he was 17. When he was 26, Boza read a report that a Dutch man had made glass ornaments move around in a body of water by waving a charged rod above it. Boza said that it, quote, almost drove me mad with delight to find the cause of the antics of the swimming glass ball. Boza was hooked. He read and repeated all the experiments he could find. In September, he read the experiments by a Frenchman named Cisterne de Fay, who had experimented with charging glass tubes by rubbing them, and had made the first rules of electricity. And he also read the work of an Englishman named Hawksby, who had found that if you had a glass tube on a spindle, you could spin it and create quite a lot of static electricity. In a stroke of brilliance, Boza combined Hawksby's electricity machine with Sister Ney de Fay's electrical experiments. Boza made his machine even better by adding what he called a prime conductor to the machine. The prime conductor was a large metal object, an iron bar, a cannon barrel, or a sword, suspended by silk cords that had one end touching the rotating sphere. In this way, the prime conductor would store more charge, or he would say it, more electrical fire, that could be used for any experiment. Boza did not contribute much to physics theory. He was interested mostly in show, and in that he was unparalleled, labeling himself a modern wizard. He created a series of quirky demonstrations for the nobility in Germany, England, France, and even Turkey, and for the Pope. The last one got him in a bit of trouble with the strict Lutherans in Germany. For example, he would invite guests to an elegant dinner and then wire forks at a dining table to his machine hidden in another room so that the sparks would fly off of them when guests sat down. Boza created his own special secret crown, which was a glass cylinder that was sealed and evacuated, made into a vacuum with metal embellishments. The king would then sit on a chair under a metal plate that would be connected to the prime conductor and the candles would be blown out. When an assistant spun the electrical machine, the sphere would charge up the prime conductor, which would charge up the plate above the king's head. Sparks would then fly between his crown and the plate above. The crown would also glow. Boza called this beatification, the term for when a saint has a glowing halo. Another favorite was to ask an attractive woman to stand on an insulating stool and touch the prime conductor. The electric machine was then run to give the lady a strong charge so that when she kissed a brave volunteer, they both got a pretty strong shock. He called it Venus Electrificada, or Venus, the goddess of love, electrified. Matthias had some pretty bad poetry on that subject. Quote, I kissed Venus standing on wax and it pained me to the quick. My lips trembled, my mouth quivered, my teeth almost broke. He also added that, quote, anyone scandalized by the experiment is advised to throw himself into the ocean. Bose's demonstrations ignited an electricity craze in Germany that bordered on fanaticism. Also note that for the first time, women were involved with the experiments and not just the ones with kisses. This was the age of enlightenment where all of upper class Europe was debating the rights of man and studying science. Women ran the salons where science was demonstrated and are in almost every picture of electricity from the time. Although they were appreciated as attractive assistants and noble patronesses of the sciences, their opinion on how electricity works was suppressed. Bose's most influential experiment was to create fire out of electricity. See, he'd read that Sister Ney had made sparks go to a bowl of water. Boza wondered if he could electrify himself 
and get sparks go from him into a container of alcohol and set the alcohol on fire. This is a very important experiment, so let me go over it in detail. First, he had an assistant spin a wheel to cause the glass tube to spin quickly. Another assistant rubbed the sphere with his bare hand to charge up the sphere. Boza then held a large metal tube against the glass sphere. He was standing on an insulating stand until he collected quite a lot of charge. Then, once he was all charged up, he would point a container of alcohol with his finger or a small sword, and a spark would leap to the alcohol and light it on fire. Let's watch that again in slow motion. Boza said he wanted to die by electric shock so that the account of his death could be reported to the memoirs of the French Academy of Sciences. Ironically, Boza did die due to his experiments with electricity, but he did not die from an electric shock, but instead because electricity made him famous. See, in 1760, he was kidnapped as a strategic asset and died in captivity. In a cruel twist of fate, Boza was famous enough to be kidnapped, but is not recognized for his contributions today. Why is Boza not more famous? Well, I think for three reasons. The first is that he was a showman who was very nervous about people stealing his thunder, so to speak. For that reason, he tended to hide the details of his experiments so that often others were credited with his discovery. The second reason is that he really, really disliked Newton's theories and English physics, which made him decidedly unpopular in England and with anyone who liked Newton, which is basically anyone in physics. The third reason is we have this image of scientists as being dignified and logical. Real science that is messy and fashionable with electric kisses and very bad poetry violates that idea. The most important consequence of Bose's experiments happened on October 11th, 1745. On that date, an amateur scientist named Edwald von Kleist, who was a fan of Bose, tried to light alcohol on fire by connecting a jar of alcohol straight to the static electricity machine. It didn't light on fire. Instead, it gave him a shock that threw him across the room. It was accidentally found it was just as powerful if it was filled with water instead of alcohol. This simple device, which is really just a glass container with water and a nail in it, shocked hundreds of people at a time and was the impetus to understanding how electricity flows, how circuits work, and led to the invention of the lightning rod and the battery. These jars were also used to help create the first radio waves in 1888 and a wireless telegraphs for the next 40 years after that. A version of this jar called a capacitor is still used today in television, radio, computers, and cell phones. So what is it and why is it so powerful? It's called a Leyden jar. And its story is next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, 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 electricity.